Hey guys, about a year ago I uploaded my first devlog of this game that I've been working on, a first proper devlog anyway. And yeah, it's kind of started this whole journey for me that's been really interesting so far. So like when I started, I kind of just had this collection of mechanics that didn't really fit together. Now I have still a collection of like random mechanics, but I feel like now it's building up to something with purpose this time. Throughout most of the year that I've been developing this, I haven't really had a solid vision or idea for the game. I've just kept on developing and trying new things and then realizing more and more about the game I want to make as it just kind of revealed itself. So thank you for everyone who's helped me on this journey so far, whether that's through social media, you just follow it on uh, Twitch, YouTube, TikTok, whatever, it's really cool. If you've given feedback or if you just said, hey, this looks cool, really appreciate that to my friends and my family as well thank you especially the ones who uh, push me to make new videos and the ones who are forced to listen to all my ideas so yeah let's go so the first thing you'd notice is probably the uh, drastic art style change i guess so early into the year i switched to using v-roy characters and i did this because i was really unhappy with the build of the characters i was using first like they were way too bulky and they looked way too old but i definitely think that like this new art style and this new version is much more improved and it definitely fits the anime aesthetic that i'm going for throughout you definitely notice that the ui is a lot cleaner it actually has personality and it doesn't look like i just started going on on real engine ui tutorials you know what i mean beginner ui is a real real problem I don't want to give away too much but in short you're an exorcist and you've got to fight demons yeah i said these characters were exorcists but since then the idea has developed into like uni students who are you know learning magic but they just work as exorcists on the side in like this agency so it's basically like a rip-off of the harry potter game that's just come out now having them as like uni students just helps me ground the story better because as a uni student i just feel like i can actually write about something that i know about now so when I started, I wanted to lock characters and weapons. So Dion would use a sword and Aaron would use a gun, for instance. Then I found out that I absolutely hated that mechanic. So I've changed it where weapons are unlocked, so any character can use any weapon, but each weapon has like its own kind of personality and its own play style, and they complement certain characters more than others. I think this makes the game way more interesting and makes collecting weapons like a big deal for the game. Also, I was using Unreal Engine's projectile system, which uh, was not helping me, so I kind of had to create my own. And the idea is for some projectiles, I use Raycast or I guess, is it Raycast or Raytrace? No, Raycast or Distance Checks and uh, use a particle effect at the hit location to make it look like something happened. Sometimes I actually have to use an actual real actor. I'm so bad at describing things. It does traces when you shoot or when you want to use the grenade as a physical actor. I also made a pooling system to come along with this and it just kind of recycles actors instead of creating them and deleting them every time which is really bad for performance. When I look at the original AI it was so bad. The AI is, uh, well, it's there. It's not in its best form at the moment, but I've got plans to work on it. See, the AI uses a weighted loot table to generate decisions, but right now it's a lot better and it's playable this time, at least 90% of the time. Yeah, this is what <laughs> only works sometimes. All I need to do is switch back though and... Uh... So I've kept AI pretty simple. Enemies cycle between a moveset of patterns so you can memorize their patterns. Some of them also have stun bars instead of blocking because blocking was really slowing down the combat. One thing I wish I could keep was the air combat and the uh, air combos but honestly I don't have enough animations to do that with all types of weapons so that had to go. Right now it's probably the companion AI that really needs improvement but I basically want to get three of the main characters done, have all of their arts for spells. Once I have all three characters done then I'll have the AI actually utilize those spells and everything. So it's a bit hard to tell but the quest system has improved so much more because the first system it was designed in such an unusable way. I kind of just followed a tutorial series on YouTube. I I have such big problems with those. I'll 
tell you about it in a different video but basically the way it works now is that each quest is kind of in its own map so when a quest is loaded in it will load in that map and when a quest is done it will unload that map that way all 400 quests aren't in the world at once while you're trying to play and all the dialogues and whatever are running at the same time that's just gonna fuck up performance it's much more efficient but it also works with the minimap system a lot better so altogether it's a lot more flexible and it's scalable it's just hard to demonstrate because i've only ever had like three working quests in the game so far so just quickly make sure that you follow and keep up with the project and any other projects i have on discord or something or here and leave a like if you enjoy and wait have i said subscribe subscribe anyway anyway that about covers what was said in the first video but i've since added and expanded a lot more in the theme of the game and with the game being uni studios within a magical world so that building system a few videos back i've definitely worked in it a lot more and i've been using it to design the campus because you know uni student and i know i said i want an open world city but <laughs> I was so stupid of me to say an open world campus was like hard enough for me to make it's not even open world at this point i'm still thinking of just doing a small part of the city but even that is a lot of work so yeah the building system has been rewritten so the windows are placed properly and there's ways for me to add doors and signs and make life so much easier there's also npcs in this which the way i handle these npcs now it just kind of tells me how much i've grown as a developer because my original method was it would have just been something like spawning 400 npcs in and being like why why is it so laggy but you see new and improved me i understand that in a large world you don't really need to have all your ai running at the same time you just need the ones close to the player so basically as i get far away from the ais certain ais will just disappear or they will reduce their tick interval and that will basically save on performance when you get far away enough they basically go to sleep and they're not really wasting resources like that i am trying to combine this with the pooling system so you wouldn't even have to spawn in new ais and everything so the dialogue system from the start has seen a few versions but at the latest it's a lot more like your traditional rpg dialogue system with a bit of my own personal touch to it trying to make it more comic book like and i know i said i wanted to do like freeze frame styles like in necromancer necromancer necrobarista right but when i got around to exploring the regular system i realized that this actually doesn't look that bad and the option to do freeze frames is still there so anyway so so far you can kind of go on replayable missions for rewards right now and choose their difficulty to get more rewards and change up your party while you're at it and this will be like your grind mechanic this is where you go farm for resources that kind of shit you can also upgrade your weapons by going to the workbench in your dorms or around the world and in your dorms is basically going to be like the hangout space for characters think like the store in persona where they just kind of be chilling there but typically the stories will start from there here you can cook meals you can study and uh, prepare for fights or whatever what studying does is basically allow you to quit study material like books research papers notes a certain interest slot or just well research paper notes and uh, notebooks the name of the paper or the study material will kind of reflect the stat that it provides so for instance if you equip a book about i don't know physical health and going to the gym you're going to see improvements in might and fitness which then improves your damage and stamina i know this all sounds like very boring because like who wants to collect books or something when you can collect like artifacts or I don't know mods or whatever I just feel like using books makes it much more immersive in the context of them being uni students I gotta say I thought there'd be a lot more but I've realized like at least in the first year it's very important for me to just lay the groundwork and to experiment with ideas especially when you don't even know what you want to make it's really good to be at this point right now and with the feedback you guys have given I don't feel like I'm wasting my time here making something that no one is interested in there's a lot of systems I want to create like uh, cooking meals consuming items which uh, really shouldn't be so hard now that I know what I'm doing but I have horrible time management along with uni and other projects <laughs> anyway I hope you like this video if you do subscribe and I can get a little bit closer to working on shit like this full time I have other cool projects I want to discuss but for now I appreciate y'all and yeah peace